Hi everybody, this is Alan from PDI Media. I'm here today to show you our new ADP sequencer, which is a MIDI software version of the original ARP sequencer from the 1970s. The original ARP sequencer was a very sophisticated 16-step sequencer. It was very sophisticated for its time. Uh, but in order to make, uh, to update this and to make it MIDI compatible and to have the kind of functionality today's users expect, we had to make a few changes. So uh, let's take a look at what the original sequencer looked like in its hardware form. Notice that we've faithfully recreated almost every aspect of this, although we've had to add some uh, extra user interface elements. So let's take a look at how the ADP sequencer works. First, let's see how we load our sequences. Right up here is where we save and load our sequences. Uh, you can save a sequence by shift-clicking on any of these numbers over here, any of these slots, and you can select the sequence by clicking on it. Anything that's yellow, uh, you can click on it, it turns blue, and then that's the sequence that's, sequence that's playing, in this case, swing one mono. We start and stop the sequencer by pressing this button, which toggles. Notice it loops through the 16 steps. We can vary the tempo, making it faster or slower. We can also swing a little bit by manipulating this FM fader. Let's swing. Now there's no swing. We'll speed it up. We can vary the pulse width, and the pulse width in this case refers to how long the note is played, how staccato it is. Shorter and longer. Let's put that in the middle. Now when we look over here at our step faders, we can see that we can change the pitch. Also change the velocity scaling, the accents, by selecting a value here. Let's first take a they're all at two, so the velocity is constant. Let's accent a few. We can also select zero, which will play uh, a zero velocity note or a space, a rest. See how that works. Okay, let's set that back and stop this. So we've seen how that works. We can also vary the amount of accent uh, here with these two dials. I can make the contrast greater, the accents are louder, I can make the contrast less. I can also scale the whole velocity in general, softer. So using a combination of values between contrast and level gives you an almost infinite amount of possibilities for accents and groove and feel. We can vary the way these switches work using this switch and this switch over here. By setting this switch to skip, any step whose switch is down in the lowest position, which we call gate bus 3, will be skipped and not played. So in other words, in this case, we'll play 1 through 7, skip 8 and 9, and then play 10 through 16. Let's skip a few more. And you can see how that works. 
Let's set it back. You can also tell the sequencer to reset or play from the beginning by setting the value of this switch. It will look for the first step who switches in the gate 3 bus uh, lowest level setting and then it'll start from the beginning. In this case it'll only play six steps and repeat. Let's set that back. We can also divide these 16 steps up into two independent sequences of eight steps apiece that play simultaneously, in other words, in harmony. Uh, so that's where we use the 8 by 2 mode. This will play step 1 and 9, 2 and 10, uh, 3 and 11 together in harmony. We can also play the steps either sequentially, ordinally, from 1 to 16, or we can play them randomly. Let's set the clock so that there's no swing, so it'll sound a little better. Speed it up. We can also step through the sequence manually by pressing this step button here. So we're controlling by clicking with our mouse on the step button. Let's reset it. And with the reset button we can do the same thing. We've just seen a very basic overview of the functionality of the sequencer. Uh, let's take a look at how the sequencer interacts with MIDI. Remember the original ARP sequencer interacted with synthesizers using control voltage and gates rather than MIDI and these plugs up here and uh, the inserts would be how it connected to the other instruments. Well in our case we're going to use MIDI so we've built a patch bay down here that uh, represents the kinds of connections that used to be able to have been made uh, using CV and regular patch cords. So let's start here in the lower left. The first menu allows us to select our keyboard input. In other words, what keyboard is going to control uh, the input to the sequencer. Notice that uh, we can uh, track velocity and pitch using these two toggles. This means that what you keys you press on your external keyboard will affect the sequence. So let's see what that sounds like. I can transpose it by playing high notes low notes, anything in between, in real time. I can also affect the bass velocity by playing very quietly, louder, so I have a lot of real time control there using these over here. Uh, the through switch allows us to hear what we're playing on our keyboard. Over here we have the output port and in this case we're going to select my Motu 828X. So this leads us to how do we get uh, our notes out to our MIDI instruments. Well we use quantize output A and quantize output B just the way we would have in the original ARP. Uh, the, patches, uh, the patch points for that on the sequencer are here and here. Notice when we click on a patch point, the patch bay item highlights in green just the way we do here, on, off, on, off. So we're going to be working with quantize out A and quantize out B. Quantize out A refers to the first eight steps. Quantize out B refers to uh, steps 9 through 16. In this case, we can individually control what channel they go out on, what uh, the transposition is, and what the velocity scale is. So let's play with that uh, just for a second, especially the transpose.
so that does what you would expect it to do. We can also uh, vary the channels. Uh, so if we wanted to play on channel 2 and then do 8 by 2, you'll notice that 9 through 16, which are playing simultaneously, are played on a different sound. Turn it off. We only hear 1 through 8. Turn it on. We now hear only 9 through 16. Change that back to channel 1. Change the transpose back. And the velocity scale back. We can also enter our pitch steps from our external keyboard by clicking on record and let's click through so we can hear what steps we're entering. I'll play a C major scale. And you'll see that uh, all those pitches are here. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D. And so now we can turn record off. Let's click through off and let's play. So that's another way that we can enter data into the sequencer. Okay, let's set the sequence back. We can do a lot of other things using our patch bay. Most of them are things that could have been done with the original ARP sequencer. Some of them are, are MIDI specific. So as we said before, by clicking on a patch point, It'll select the area where we can control what that patch point does. So let's turn that off. Let's look at each one of these. Uh, we won't uh, show you all of them, but I'll describe them. Uh, step uh, uh, allows you to use either a MIDI note or a controller to control the step button. Uh, reset allows you to control the reset button, again, using any note or controller you like. PWM allows you to control the pulse width uh, from this fader. Uh, start and stop, of course, allows us to do this toggle of start and stop. Channel aftertouch allows us to use aftertouch to control various functions. Uh, we can use pitch bend with our gates. No notice the numbers 1, 2, and 3. That refers to the switch positions 1, 2, and 3. So if I have pitch bend here, on for gate bus 1, everything uh, that is set to gate bus 1, that means at the top, we'll throw a little pitch bend in, and the amount of pitch bend and the time of it will be set here, and the amount will be set here, and you can kind of hear that. So every other note has a pitch bend. That's what that does. Over here, we can control what these patch points did. The gate buses, these are outputs uh, that uh, sent gate information and trigger information to a, a synthesizer. So those are represented over here, one, two, and three, these three. In this case, I've set these to play notes, A sharp two, D sharp two, and A sharp three on a gate bus 1, gate bus 2, and gate bus 3. That means every time gate bus 1, every time there's an up position, uh, uh, an A sharp 2 will play, uh, a D sharp 3 will play every time it's in the middle, and a A sharp 3 will play any time it's on the bottom. So let me put a few bottoms here. And that is in addition to the notes that are normally being played. There are a couple of other pretty cool features that the patch bay gives you. One of them is rotate. When you turn rotate on, you choose a MIDI port, and you choose a number of channels, and then sequentially, 
the steps will play out on a rotation of channels. If you choose four, it'll play one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, sequentially, and that can be chosen to uh, anything from one to 16 channels, and you can do that on any port. Uh, you can also select the color of your background, and uh, let's make it a little redder, maybe. Uh, bring it over here and you can select how much you want that saturated so that's uh, another little little feature that we have and here's a, a very interesting one and that's VST you can choose any VST instrument that you want to play so you would just select your VST let's uh, say Dex Ed and then you would show it and you could select a sound and you wouldn't even need to connect to an external MIDI device you could just use the VST instrument as it is. The ADP sequencer also uh, receives MIDI clock and does some acrobatics with uh, rhythms from incoming clock also you can send MIDI beat clock and sync external devices as well. So finally, let's take a look at how we manage our presets and our files. Uh, as I said before, we set our presets here by shift-clicking on any of these slots. We've saved the current settings to that slot. We recall it by clicking on it and it'll turn blue. So we can do that. We can save the file to disk here. As an advanced function, we can actually set our preferences. We can choose which one of our parameters gets saved with the sequence and which ones are controlled globally in real time. Uh, that's a very powerful feature uh, for people who want to use this uh, in performance. We can also chain our presets. So when this is selected, we say uh, from what sequence to what sequence. We're going from 1 to 8, so we'll play from 1 to 8 and loop around. Speed it up. 4, 5, So that's very powerful. Your sequences can be of any length. Uh, they can have any different settings you want so that you might think of this as a kind of song mode. So that's the ADP sequencer. Uh, if you have any questions or maybe would like to get an advanced copy, just contact me, uh, Alan Dudek, at the email showing on your screen. We'll be providing more videos, more in-depth tutorials and getting started tutorials. So thanks for listening and I hope you check out our other software.